Welcome back, guys. It's time for trapezoids and kites. So in this chapter, we've been learning all about quadrilaterals. And we have been classifying them according to their properties. And so we spent a lot of time learning about parallelograms and special parallelograms. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the last three kites, trapezoids, and isosceles trapezoids. So let's get started. First of all, kites. And I encourage you to draw this diagram in your notes. Make sure that you include all of the congruence marks and all the marks. So a kite is a quadrilateral. It has exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but the opposite sides are not congruent. Also notice that the diagonals are perpendicular. And finally, there's exactly one pair of opposite angles that are congruent. You can see that angle K is congruent to angle T. So here's an example. So we're given that DEFG is a kite, and we're asked to find the measure of angle D. Well, kites are quadrilaterals. And what do we know about the sum of the measures of the interior angles of any quadrilateral? They all add up to 360 degrees. We also know that angle D and angle F are congruent. And therefore, the measure of angle D is equal to the measure of angle F. So we could write an equation that the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F plus the measure of angle G equals 360 degrees. But instead of doing that, we can simply write this equation, 2 times the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle G equals 360 degrees. So now we can substitute in these values for this and this, and we can divide both sides of this by 2 so that we get measure of angle D by itself. And with a little arithmetic, we find out that the measure of angle D is equal to 86 degrees. And now trapezoids. With trapezoids, you have to know some terminology. These two sides are called the legs, and these two sides are called the bases. Okay, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of opposite sides, exactly one pair. That means the other pair is not parallel. The parallel sides are called bases, base, base. The non-parallel sides are the legs. There's a more specific type of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid. And where did we hear this term isosceles before? Way back in semester one, when we were studying triangles, we learned about isosceles triangles, and we'd find them as a triangle that has at least two sides congruent to each other. Well, look at an isosceles trapezoid, and you can see some similarities. This trapezoid has these two sides. These are the legs. The two legs are congruent to each other. Notice that the bases are not congruent. So the legs are congruent. All other properties of trapezoids still are retained. Each pair of base angles is congruent. So this pair of base angles are congruent, and this pair of base angles are congruent. Diagonals are also congruent to each other. There's a theorem that talks about the mid-segment of any trapezoid. Now, the mid-segment is simply a segment inside of a trapezoid whose endpoints are on the midpoint of the two legs. Okay? The mid-segment is also really cool because it's going to be parallel to both of the bases. And what's even cooler is that the length of the mid-segment is the average of the length of the two bases. So in this diagram, Mn is equal to one half the quantity of AB plus DC. So let's use some properties of trapezoids and kites to solve some problems. So can you go ahead and find the measure of each angle of these isosceles trapezoids? Pause the video and go ahead and solve these. Problems. Okay, so we know that the base angles are congruent. What else do we know? 
we know that these two angles would be consecutive interior angles because you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, so they're going to be supplementary. The same pattern is true for these other isosceles trapezoids. So what about the mid-segment? Can we solve for a mid-segment? Or if we know what the mid-segment is and one of the sides, can we solve for the other side? So go ahead and pause the video and solve for, in this case, the mid-segment, and in this case, the missing side, the missing base. So recall that the mid-segment, recall that the mid-segment is just the average, the, the length of the mid-segment, I should say, is the average of the length of the two bases. So 19 plus 11 is 30, divided by 2 is 15. Don't forget your units, feet. In this case, 10 plus x divided by 2, that quantity divided by 2, would be equal to 12, or 10 plus x equals 24. Subtracting 10 from both sides, you get x equals 14. And don't forget your units, 14 meters. All right, guys, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoy today's practice problems.